This is Joy News Prime with me, Blessed Suga. In this bulletin, opposition NDC rejects calls for a probe into the death of former President Mills as its general secretary questions the basis of the investigations. Also, minority in parliament sector hall, majority chief whip Frank Anodon prayed to the Privileges Committee over alleged falsification of names supporting parliamentary probe into the death of Professor John Evans Mills. They have not, they are not part of the motion. They are signatories. And this motion. amount to perjury. But I've seen the motion. They are signatories. They the have motion. written to their leadership to withdraw their names from it because you, they saw it on social media. They did not take part in the draft of the motion. Fly to Ghana at your own risk. Ghana Meteorological Agency halts a gathering of critical weather reports to flights database as it begins an indefinite strike. It is mandatory on us to observe the weather and then report the weather every three hours. Because when you come currently, you are doing so at your own risk. We are live on DSTV Channel 421, Go TV Channel 144. This is your home of independent, fearless, credible journalism. Stay for details. And tonight, the Ghana Meteorological Agency is warning airlines flying to Ghana, saying they are doing so at their own risk. According to them, they have halted the sending of synoptic data on the country's weather that facilitates flight movement. Workers of the Ghana Meteorological Agency yesterday withdrew their services over poor conditions of service. According to the staff, the government has failed to respond to their resolution presented to the Communications and Digitalization Ministry on January 5, which enumerates the issues that must be addressed. Director of Forecasting and Synoptic Meteorology at GMET, Potofitete, says the absence of such data will affect flight movement. The uh, management meeting with the union and then the deputy minister when I, walk, I, I, I came here. So I hope that by the close of day, um, something fruitful will come out of it. Because the, the union put certain things, and if those demands, some of them can be met, but some of them maybe from Monday, Tuesday, when is it going? Yeah. The data is to observe all the weather parameters pressure, relative humidity, sunshine, dew points, um, sunshine duration. Uh, solar radiation, incoming radiation, soil temperature, and all the, almost all the weather parameters that you can think of. We need to observe it, and the observer or the technical officer need to record very dire consequences because um, we are part of World Meteorological Organization of the UN, and it is mandatory on us to observe the weather and then report the weather every three hours throughout the country. So every three hourly, there is what we call synoptic data that we observed, we record, and then we push into the global system. Mm. And if they are not working, we'll lose data for that, and the whole world will also suffer. Mm. It is very dark consequence. In certain places, um, certain airlines cannot even come. Because when you come currently, you are doing so at your own risk. Our men are not providing that service. Whatever they are getting the service from, well, we don't know. But if they are doing so, they are doing so at their own risk. If something happens, we don't have any document to go and back them with. Well, Nanaya Wakwada is the executive director of the Bureau of Public Safety, He's joining us now via Zoom. Uh, first of all, Nanaya Wakwada, how much of a worry should this be? Well, um, I hope my mic is on. Good evening to your uh, viewers. I think that um, data for flight, landing, and takeoff is very critical to. Um, aviation, um, you know, operations. But as to whether the public should be um, worried over the strike of the meteor department, I think that there's a lot that we need to consider. Um, I think about three or so years ago, when we had the opportunity to engage with the Ghana Civil Aviation, one of the that we came across was the Aviation Services Department, where they provide um, air traffic control uh, information, the relay information to incoming flights and outgoing flights. We also came across this small section where they provide a semblance of 
some meteor services. You'll agree with me that if the whole of today flights are taken off and landing, then there must be some redundant, um, you know, set up somewhere to provide the Ghana civil aviation, um, you know, with meteor data. And as far as we are concerned, that aspect of the aviation department has been um, activated now at least um, to provide data for the few days that um, hopefully mm. the few days that the major department will be off. What, what more safety measures are to be con considered in the interim? And at least you're telling us of one. Well, I think in the interim, I believe that the Ghana Civil Aviation may be relying on data provided by the uh, Meteor Services Department, but I do not know how long um, this can be sustainable, even though I believe that it, I mean, the Ghana Civil Aviation is a very resource, um, you know, authority. And so there's a possibility that they can actually hold the fort for a long time. But we also know that the Meteorological Services um, department is the department that is mandated to provide such data for um, aviation operations. And so I do not know how long, um, you know, the Ghana Civil Aviation will have to provide the data for itself uh -huh. uh, without the material services department taking them on. Uh, and, and if but you... The uh, interim, right. I think that the government commits Mm. In the interim, I think that there is no cause for um, the traveling public. Uh, and if you pay close attention to what's been happening, the Kutuka International Airport has been in the news in recent times of uh, uh, varied reasons. Uh, do these developments have a possibility of really affecting safety standards and also the issue about public confidence? Yes and no. You see, um, we have flights taken off from an directly into some very sensitive air spaces. I'm talking spaces like the United States. We have a direct flight from Ghana to US, a direct flight from Ghana to France, from Ghana to UK, Germany and the like. These are big, big, big sensitive spaces that whose spaces are really, really regulated. And so incidents in, in, in recent times I do not think they, they have a good, you know, a good or developed. We may, if we are not careful, we may come under some uh, pressure to ensure that our spaces are really safe and secure to be able to fly into other spaces. We said, I mean, I've discussed a couple of people privately that if we are not careful to manage the issues involving the Ghana um, airport company versus other private persons very well, and we catch the eyes of the FAA and you know its counterparts across other um, states, we may really come under a lot of pressure, and it will affect the traveling public. Mm -hmm. And so I'm happy that within the shortest possible time, they are bringing matters, you know, to closure in very civil ways so that we can continue to right. put out that integrity and that um, you know sense of safety you know around our our airport mm. obviously we need solutions what are your expectation uh, from the relevant authorities regarding uh, solving this issue because obviously uh, the, the staff are on strike as we speak well it's unfortunate that the Ghana Meteo Department strike is being looked at in the light of only aviation. But there are other aspects that they provide services for. And as, as, for instance, the Marine, they provide services for the Marine. None of us want to wake up tomorrow morning to the news that a group of fishermen who went out, to, you know, have been caught off guard and the bad weather. Mm. We do not want to wake up to see that the time that our farmers should have planted, you know, based on the weather for the year, um, they missed it because Meteor Services Department was on strike. And so it's absolutely important that the authorities, you know, 
pay, listen to their concerns, and if possible, or possibly solve their problems for them. Because in the long term, in the long term, it may have severe consequences for all the areas that we said, including aviation, which now we believe that they are providing data services for themselves. Uh, Nana Yawakwara, I'm grateful for your time on Joy News Prime. Now, the National Democratic Congress is rejecting calls for a probing to the death of former President Mills under the insistence that the details of the demise is public knowledge. This comes on the heels of four majority MPs filing a private member's motion for the committee to be set up. The MPs say they, this will settle the mystery surrounding the former president's death. But the late president's brother disagrees. We'll hear uh, the general secretary of the NDC, Johnson Asiedu Nketiah, about this emerging controversy. But first, here's a news desk report. This year marks 10 years since former President John Evans Atta Mills died. His health status became a talking point when some, including the MPP opposition at the time, raised concerns about his absence at some national events. In fact, rumors were rife that he had died and government officials were tight-lipped on the matter. But in a move to debunk the rumors, Professor Atta Mills, upon arrival from a trip abroad, jogged in the presence of journalists in June 2012, the former president left Ghana for a medical checkup in the U.S. Later, he told party supporters and journalists, doctors had given him the all clear. I have just arrived from the U.S. where I undertook a regular medical checkup. Thank God, everything is okay. But everything was not okay. Shortly after, on July 24, John Evans Atta Mills died. There have been questions surrounding the exact cause of his death. His brother, Dr. Cadman Mills, later disclosed he had died from complications of a massive hemorrhagic stroke resulting from a brain aneurysm. But now, four MPP MPs want to settle the facts and mystery surrounding the former president's death. Majority Chief Whip, Frank Anodompre, is leading the group. It has been 10 years. Then this call should have come earlier. We must set the record straight. We know it's a delicate call. We are doing this not out of malice. It's a pure out of patriotism. But Samuel Atta Mills, brother to the late president, says the motion is needless. Why are they trying to cry more than they believed? You care about Professor Mills, the honorable J.B. Dan Kwedra, who was murdered at his house. Have you investigated that? Why? But let me tell you something. Professor Mills is the only sitting president who has passed on so far. Who has passed on so far? And I don't pray. I respected you. It remains to be seen whether the move by the majority is born out of malice or patriotism. Well, the General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson Asiri Nketia, says there's no basis for the investigations into the death of the former President John Mills. First of all, honestly, I don't understand what the MPs want Parliament to investigate. The purpose of any investigation is to find out uh, maybe something that is not on public record or there is... Uh, some occurrence which is shrouded in some secrecy and or the circumstances of which suggest that uh, there could have been some foul play and all that. So far, I don't have any record to suggest that Professor Mills' death, when there is something about Professor Mills' death that is not in the public domain. So I would like to understand what is it that parliament is supposed to look for well mr city getter they say that there are some mysteries surrounding the death of the president it is not and very exactly clear that exactly that what caused his death and under which circumstances for, what, what for which they want is the probe the to settle that professor Amel didn't die and he was buried or that there was some accident uh the circumstances of the accident are not understood or what as far as i'm concerned this is somebody who was sick he was uh, in the company of, uh, you know, people 24-7. When the illness de deteriorated, he was sent to a hospital, a reputable hospital of record. And uh, the passing happened 
when he was still in the hands of competent medical men. Is it the case that the doctors have suggested something fishy which needs to be investigated? Or is it the case that his medical records are not available for anybody who so wishes to find out anything about the cause mm-hmm. of his death will not get it? In fact, Parliament cannot be pushed to establish a committee to look for something that is already <laughs> on public record. Well, the minority in Parliament says it will haul the majority chief whip, Frank Anodombre, to the Privileges Committee over alleged falsification of names of MPs in support of the probe into the death of uh, Professor John Evans Atamils. Uh, four NPP MPs, including Frank Anodompre, filed a private member's motion asking Parliament to set up a bipartisan committee to investigate the circumstances leading to the death of uh, Professor Mills. But the Deputy Minority Chief Whip, Ahmed Ibrahim, is alleging that two NPP MPs out of the four had no knowledge of the said motion, a situation he believes amounts to perjury. Ahmed Ibrahim has been speaking to my colleague, pa- Kwesi Paka Wilson. All that the leader of the majority and the leader of the house, led by his bench, all they can do to falsify signatures of their members and file a motion because they did that just a while and we didn't talk. I have spoken to the two other MPs. Right. I have spoken to OPK and I have spoken to Ninoy. They said they have no idea of the motion. They have no idea of the they motion. Have no, they are not part of the motion. They are signatories. And this the amount to Pedre. But I've seen the motion. They are signatories. The they motion. have written to their leadership to withdraw their names from it because you, they saw it on social media. They did not take part in the draft of the motion and signatures. And I went to the speaker mm. to cross check. It is only another prayer whose signature is on the motion. Honorable, this is the majority caucus. And is the leadership decision I said, they consult, I've spoken, they engage. To, I've spoken to OPK. He said he was not party to the motion. He did not sign any motion. I've spoken to Ninoy. He said he was not party to the motion. He did not sign any motion. I've gone to the speaker's office. It is only another prayer whose signature is on the motion. However, the people who are being insulted on social media, they are saying that the fourth stupid fools that they have brought to say that they've included Ninoy and this as if they are part of the motion. Meanwhile, they have confided in me. You saw me when I was speaking to Ninoy. Right. I was talking to OPK on phone. They've both said they are not, this is, this is impersonation. They are not party to this motion. That's perjury. What's the minority going to do about this, sir? I, I went to my, my, my minority leader's office. He was not there. I went to Chief Hughes' office. Not the parliament is sitting. So what we are going to do as minority will meet on this. The minority and majority caucus uh, clashed in parliament over government's indebtedness to the district common fund. Deputy Minority Chief Whip Ahmed Ibrahim, who raised the matter on the floor, alleged that government has refused to release funds to the common fund since last year. But the claim was challenged by the deputy finance minister. This uh, generates controversies and heated debate amongst members of the divide. Here are excerpts of what transpired in the chamber. Mr. Speaker, I want to know from the Deputy Majority Leader and the Acting Tama of the Business Committee when the 33 funds will be programmed for consideration in this house. Mr. Speaker, I'm saying this because the Business Committee, even though programs, what comes to them from the Speaker's office? And yesterday, none of the three funds, District Assembly Common Fund, Ghana Educational Trust Fund, National Health Insurance Authority Service Fund, all these three funds, Mr. Speaker, you know, by law, three months after the passage of the budget, these formulas must be brought to this for approval. Mr. Speaker, there has not been disbursement. The whole of 2021, Mr. Speaker, the 2.4 billion cities that we approved for this Assembly Common Fund, there was no transfer from the Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, initially he said nothing has been paid. Now he's saying something has been paid. This house is a house of records, Mr. Speaker. We have paid some of the GACS. Last year we did pay. 
and we will continue to pay what is due. Mr. Speaker, this house is a house of records. There's a difference between not paying and now changing the tune to we have paid something. In as much as things are not the way it used to be, we will have to tell the truth in this house. Mr. Speaker, we have paid 2021 DACF. We have paid some. We paid 2021 first quarter. We paid 2021 second quarter. We, the outstanding is 2023 third quarter. And the fourth quarter is due end of March 2022. Mr. Speaker, this is a serious matter. The seriousness of this matter stands from the Constitution because it's a constitutional provision that for not less than 5% of the common fund should be released to the district assemblies for the development of the assemblies. On a quarterly basis. On a quarterly basis. Yes. And the member is alleging that this government is denying the assemblies resources to develop the assemblies. The Speaker, the Constitution does not talk about the development of the assemblies. It talks about the development of the districts. The, the monies that you are talking about are not meant for the development of the assemblies. They are meant for the development of the districts. The speaker, <laughs> there's, there's a world of difference. But the deputy majority leader, Alexander Penyomaki, attributed a delay in the release of the funds to the e-levy. He charged the minor minority to support government in its quest to improve, uh, approve actually the levy to ensure uh, the continuous release of monies to the common fund. Today, I am, I am surprised they themselves are complaining about statutory funds. You need funds in your various constituencies. I'm happy the pressure is coming from your constituencies. Assist government to pass the e levy. Assist government to pass the e levy. I'm happy the heat is on you. The heat is on you. Are you having for that bread or comfortable bread? That is why it's here. It's going to be considered. Now, Speaker of Parliament Alban Bagbin has questioned the rumble style approach adopted by the police service in the arrest of journalists allegedly involved in false publications describing such as backwardness. The Speaker, who is incensed over the recent development, argued that the swift arrest of these journalists is an affront to free speech, according to him, uh, persons who feel slanted by what they describe as false media publications should resort to the rule of law and not the use of force by the police. Speaking to the uh, speaking at the commissioning of the Parliamentary Press Corps Office, Mr. Bagbin charged government to strengthen the N NMC in dealing uh, with recalcitrant, uh, recalcitrant journalists. Oftentimes, now first as journalists disseminate the information we have in a timely manner to beat the deadline set for us, we make some mistakes. Our information accounts do not turn out to be entirely accurate. We end up making some misrepresentations, at times impending on the integrity and reputation of others. The media space and Ghana's legal regime for the media anticipated this and has prescribe, I should say prescribe, a way out of this challenge. That is why we have the National Media Commission and Parliament we need to focus on the National Media Commission. We need to urgently revise a law on the Media Commission to add some teeth and resources for the commission to be effective. It's because of this challenge also that we have so many laws on media and free speech. As a lawyer myself, in the early days of my practice and also my parliamentary life, I was compelled to take a number of media houses to court using the rule of law not the rule of man. Meanwhile, MP for Domi Kwabinya has been absent from parliamentary duties for 15 working days.
You're still with us here on the Joy News Prime. Uh, we need to uh, tell you about what's still to come. Local market leader Goyle has joined other big firms like Shell and Total to increase fuel prices at the pumps. More in business. Stay tuned. <music> The National Health Insurance Scheme in the Bono region says they have exceeded the World Health Organization's universal health coverage target of 80% population coverage. WHO under the Sustainable Development Goal 3 targets to achieve UHC for all by 2030. But according to the Bono Regional Director of uh, the National Health Insurance Authority, Joseph Menza, they are eight years ahead of the target having enrolled 82% in 2020 and 81% in 2021 of the regional population of 1,168,807 and also 1,208,649 respectively uh, onto the scheme. 2021 end of year performance review meeting of the National Health Insurance Authority in Sunyani brought together staff of the health insurance scheme in the 12 districts of the Bono region for the stock taking exercise. In his address, the Bono Regional Director of the NHIA, Joseph Mensah, said they have topped the NHIA's annual active membership performance league table for four successive years. This, he said, exceeds the World Health Organization's universal health coverage target, where people will have access to essential health services. When the Bono region was divided into three and the new Bono region started operating as an autonomous structure, under the same leadership, the Bono region enrolled 82% and 81% in 2020 and 2021, respectively, of the regional population onto the National Health Insurance Scheme, which exceeded the WHO universal health coverage target of 80% population coverage. We've achieved two significant things. The target for the country, where the region has been able to chop the first position. What makes this achievement even more complete is that universal health coverage highlights three dimensions, namely population covered effectively, essential services covered, and direct costs or insurance. Mr. Mensah attributed the success to the commitment of the staff amid the many challenges. He, however, assured of their determination to improve their services to ensure value for money for their clients and service providers. Claims payment to our providers has improved greatly in the period under review. The authority has reimbursed facilities for services rendered up to the month of June 2021. The Bull region has been highly applauded by the head office for working hard to lower the co-payment in quotes system and other related practices at the provider sites. A senior monitoring and evaluation officer at the regional office of the authority, Mohamed Boguma, explained that aside from assessing the service providers' facilities, they also conduct a clinical audit into their services and procedures while educating the public on the benefits of the scheme. We conduct clinical audits into the services and procedures of providers to make sure that they are doing the right thing and our, our clients, the providers call them patients, get value for money. We also do regular stakeholder engagement with providers to discuss issues bordering on NHIS. We do strategic targeting of providers for effective engagement to discuss the problem of illegal collections and also for the way forward. Then we have punishment for recalcitrant of fraudulent acts by providers. Precious Semevo, Joy News, Sunyane. The Ghana Revenue Authority is poised to leverage digitization to achieve uh, the 80.3 billion Ghana City revenue target for 2022. The GRA Commissioner General, Amisha Dayo Amwa, said several inno innovative ideas have been tabled to be executed in the year aimed at expanding the country's revenue mobilization system. He said this at uh, the GRA 2022 
management retreat at the Volta Serene Hotel in Ho. The Ghana Revenue Authority Commissioner General, Amishadai Owusu Amwa, indicated that the digitization drive for domestic tax and customs division will continue unabated, where the next phase of ECOMS and the taxpayer portal would be deployed. He highlighted the piloting of e-commerce, gaming and bet taxes, among other strategies to enhance revenue mobilization. We will, once we get the approval from Parliament, implement the e-levy and we will carry out massive education and garnish support as much as possible to ensure that it is successful in the country. We are also conscious of the VAT, and I've also heard people talk about that, and I also want to announce that by 1st April, we will start piloting uh, v electronic uh, VAT, or electronic invoicing. And we have already selected a number of uh, taxpayers, about 100 of them, who will be part of the piloting. The Deputy Finance Minister, Abena Osei Asari, entreated the GRA to undertake staff capacity building and leverage digital space to achieve revenue targets. So, we chair, the exigencies of our current situation, high youth unemployment, limited fiscal space, and a global pandemic, demand authority is what well positioned to deliver prompt, convenient, and responsive service of the highest quality. To do this, we believe that these two fundamental principles must guide you. One is empowering our GRE staff to work to high standards and full accountability. And then two is leveraging digital tools to realize operational efficiencies. I believe these principles will cause a fundamental shift in the perception of GRE staff. The Volta Regional Minister, Dr. Ashibod Lecha, implored GRA to explore all measures towards attaining the Ghana Beyond Aid mantra. As we all know, economies the world over have not been the same since COVID-19 appeared. In spite of these challenges, we are determined as a country to be self-reliant without heavily relying on the continuous support from the World Bank, IMF, and other donor partners. Togwe Chairman, for government to attain its goal of Ghana Beyond Aid, authority must use all available means to mobilize the needed revenue to fund the provision of infrastructure, such as hospitals, portable and all other amenities needed to make the lives of our citizens better. Fred Kwame Asai, Joy News. Who... The second D, Takradi Metropolitan Assembly, has officially outdoored the Twin Cities in Sustainable Partnership Project, aimed at enhancing living conditions of people in the metropolis. The project, funded by the European Union, has three uh, activity timelines, uh, and it includes a multi-level urban governance uh, to enhance urban governance towards green, inclusive, and culturally sensitive integrated development. About 2,600 residents of the second D Takradi metropolis and 600,000 locals will benefit directly and indirectly, respectively, from a partnership project between the metropolis and its sister city in Italy uh, municipality. Um, correspondent in Italia Kwanza has the rest of the story. Another focus would be on culturally sensitive and inclusive urban strategies to stimulate inclusion for all and sundry, particularly the vulnerable in society, as well as urban climate change resilience to contribute towards a sustainable and climate resilient city. A senior development planner of the STMA and project coordinator Isaac Adu said the project was under the EU's Local Authorities Partnership for Sustainable Cities program to promote integrated urban development through partnership. The global objective for the program that we are all witnessing today is to promote integrated urban development through partnership built among local authorities of the EU states 
and partner countries in accordance with Agenda 2030 on sustainable development. Specifically, we want to enhance urban management and climate resilience. We also want to foster trans transactional cooperation and boosting socioeconomic development, which is the focus of our project. From the local government service, Dr. Nana Ato Atha commended the team that put together the proposal for your man's achievements, adding that their outcomes could help in achieving the SDGs 11 and 17. That the project resonates well with two of the sustainable development goals. That goals 11 and 17. Could fall under sustainable cities and communities and partnerships, respectively. The 11 talks about sustainable communities, a safe, more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable cities, and the 17 talks about partnerships. But with this project, I am certain that we can mobilize more funds for various developmental activities, as well as enhancing the socioeconomic development of the citizenry. Western Regional Minister Dr. Kobna Otredako Mensa lauded the medium term development plan of the Assembly and how timely the project said to contribute to the equal opportunities for wealth for the people of the metropolis. Following the approval of the current 2022 to 2025 medium term development plan last year, management has been focusing on mobilizing the needed resources to complement the expected central government support to implement the city's medium term plans. It was therefore in this light that the Assembly tasked a team to link up with the sister city, Palermo, the project to the people of the metropolis and beyond, especially the teaming unemployed youth, vulnerable, deprived, and marginal groups are enormous. Ultimately, the project is aimed at enhancing urban management. This is a feat we must all commend the STMA team for chalking. The budget for the project is a 3 million euro, of which the European Union will fund 95%, with Secondita Crowded Metropolitan Assembly funding only 5%. For Joy News in Athalia, Kansa, Takrade. Now, Food and Agri Minister Dr. Ufriye Akoto has hinted he will be contesting for the NPP 2024 presidential candidature if the opportunity presents itself. In a yet to be aired interview on personality profile, Dr. Ufriye Akoto told Aisha Ibrahim he has what it takes to be president. I mean, your name keep popping up as one of the faces that could stand for the presidential candidature, but I, have, I haven't heard you talk about it. Uh, do you have presidential ambitions? Every police recruit wishes that at the end of the day he becomes the IGP. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So unless anybody who has no ambition would say that they are not interested in the leadership, if people are talking about that, it means they recognize the contribution that I've made in five years with that portfolio. And that one, I have no influence on their views. So, so if the opportunity presents itself... Oh, I mean, it's a great honor. I mean, Ghana is a great country. And if your party decides that you are the one that they want you to lead, uh, it, there couldn't be a, a bigger honor than that. Well, the full interview airs at 9 p.m. on Joy News Channel. Make a date. Up next is sports. <laughs> Hello, good evening, and welcome to the sports segment here with me, Oreik Wampo, for Sunday's super clash between Heart of Oak and Asante Kotoko at the Accra Sports Stadium. will see the venue maintain the 25% stadium capacity. The National Sports Authority did confirm this. Uh, the government had earlier imposed a restriction on all match centers across the country to allow just 25% of fans into the stadium. 
measure to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. The NSA was looking to see whether the number uh, could increase ahead of the clash between Hart and Kotokon Sunday as they asked the government COVID-19 task force to ease the restrictions in order to see more fans attend the game. However, latest reports indicate the government is yet to respond to the demand of the NSA, but the Ghana Football Association also is said to have printed just 9,200 tickets, which represents 25% of the stadium capacity. Now to the NSA uh, for distribution ahead of the encounter. But then also still on the ticket issues, uh, news reaching us is that all tickets have been sold out ahead of the Sunday game between Hart and Kotoko. And so if no new tickets are printed uh, before that, do make sure to stay at home and, you know, not overcrowd the area uh, at the Accra Sports Stadium, especially if you do not have a ticket. Meanwhile, members of the Porcupine and Phobia Tertiary have been talking ahead of this big game uh, between Hart Folk and Asante Kotoko. Of course, we, we believe in Obeonfo. We know what Obeonfo can do. And Phobia will attest to the fact that um, we are on form. And then it's a massive straight to no win for Asante Kotoko. So... They should just get ready for us. We are coming with fire. We believe in Obeon for the lives of Embella, Charlie. I don't want to talk much. We don't want to talk much. We show action, so they should just get ready for us. Massive support, um, morale throughout, 90 minutes morale, before the game, during the game, and after the game. Massive support because we know we are coming in for a win, so the morale is going to be great. The fire is going to be on. They should just get ready for us. Action day. We are planning to rep our people. We are planning to rep our people, the club. It is our heart. We cannot do anything without it. So we are actually coming together, I mean, putting brains together to rep hard. I mean, give them the massive support they need on Sunday. So I, I think even the support is going to scare Kotoko fans away. <laughs> yes, I am very positive about that. Uh, they should know Sunday, Action Day. If Fok Panther Shari Day, then it means Action Day. We are coming. And then let them know we are coming to beat them. On a very good day, we'll score them 2-0. So last season like this, we were in the same situation. Last season by this time, we were on and off like this. But you know, whenever it comes to us, Kotoko like this, we don't look at those things. And last year we started slowly, but we ended up clinching the trophy. Yes, so this year too, hopefully, hopefully, after winning Kotoko, I know things will, will go well in our side. This is a crowd of folk. We never say die. Whenever it comes to us, Kotoko, we don't look at form. We don't look at form. We will score them. I know we will beat them. We'll be there and then after beating them, you'll see a class of folk now. We'll use them to revive our team. Yes. Yes. Now things are not going well, but we are going to use them to revive our team. Yes. Well, that's how we wrap up the first part of the sports segment. I'll be back in the next hour also. But if you do want some more sports stories, you can follow us on social media on Twitter at JoySportsGH or check out our website, MyJohnOnline for a slash sports. Well, it's time now to check happening in the world of entertainment becky is here every night every thank night god i'm here thank god it's, it's friday, friday. Yeah. and thank god that we have a vibrant music industry that yeah. you know keeps giving us a whole lot more yeah. to yeah. keep celebrating the, right. the and it's music bouncing and... back so so fast after mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. right. and so well, it's, uh, not, it's not as though COVID is even gone, gone but yeah, at least but we are seeing a rebound yeah uh, let's talk about the legendary night. Uh, it's supposed to happen at inside UK okay. uh, in London uh, on the 26th of uh, March. And it's set to promote essentially uh, Ghanaian music outside the country. And we had you know, the, likes, uh, the likes of um, Samini, okay. uh, KK Fosu, name them. We were at the launch mm. of this event and we spoke to a few people about this particular event. <laughs> What inspired me was looking at the range of artists that have made bangers from the likes of, of Ryan Ponsa, the old school guys, you know. One thing I know is that London really loves the old school people. So bringing out a lineup like this will bring a lot of headliners, you know. And then bringing out some faces that we haven't seen performing in a long time, likes of Engineer Entry, the uh, Dada KD, you know, the... I mean, I could name them Sonia Chiba and bring them on together and bring in the new school as well, make an epic scene, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that, was, that was the reason why I bought this lineup up. 
And, and how feasible do you think that is? You've had, we've, had, we've had conversations about how uh, everything is in place for this program to take off, uh, but how, is, um, how important is this concert or uh, this program uh, to the Ghanaian populace? You see, um, basically you, you saw the number of uh, artists and industry people that came here to just support you know, this whole concert. What it's actually trying to tell us is, is that, you know, once we agree to come together to, you know, to, to, to do something, we will be able to achieve it. So with a big project like this, trying to feel like a 5,000 capacitor O2 Brixton, we need all, we, we all of us need to come together. It's a huge opportunity for us all, you know, the diaspora, the Ghanaian artists and everybody as a Ghanaian. So I think this is an opportunity for us to meet them, you know. After Corona, there isn't such a huge event like that. So I think this is a huge opportunity for us all. Yeah, yeah it's still the launch of the legendary night. Cartel Big J, always representing the brand. Uh, prior and he's right here. I love you know all the things. Thank that you. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? What do you make of this particular one? Well, I think it's a laudable um, 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 initiative. Um, um, Stage Entertainment in collaboration with Kaya Tours. Um, this is a very big one. Uh, looking at the names that are, uh, are built to perform on the event, Charlie. That's a huge one. Nobody has ever attempted that in my 18 years of going back and forth to Europe and doing shows abroad. This is a big one. And I think I like the combination. I like the, like I was saying, I like the cocktail of genres that have been prided. Well, well uh, um, yeah. Kitty there. You know, uh, Black Sheriff also has released, you know, mm. uh, the remix with um, uh, Burner Boy right. and it's also trending. So it's like a, well, a, a night of remixes. <laughs> sort thank of. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and for those of you uh, who are watching us on Joy Prime, I guess this will be the end of it. But for those of you on the Joy News channel, we have more stories coming up. A human rights civil society organization, uh, POS Foundation, is advocating for the review of Article 72 uh, by including uh, convicted non-violent uh, drug users uh, serving below 10 years in the uh, amnesty criteria. The foundation is willing to support pardoned prisoners uh, with, uh, which may need uh, to go through rehabilitation to enable them to reintegrate into society. The executive director of PS Foundation, Jonathan Osei, also said this on the sideline of a donation to the whole central prison to fortify the installation uh, they have there against COVID-19. There's more in the following report. Ghana have been lauded for not recording a single case of coronavirus since the emergence of the deadly virus in 2019, irrespective of the overcrowded nature. This, according to authorities, was achieved due to the strict adherence to the safety protocols coupled with other in-house policies to safeguard prisons in the country. However, the POS Foundation believes there is a need to deconject the prisons to lessen the effect of an outbreak. The executive director of the foundation, Jonathan Osayo Wusu, is proposing the reviewing of Article 72. You know, Ghana's prisons are overcrowded, something that we are all aware. As COVID-19 came about, the president, through his prerogative, granted amnesty. We are calling on the president again to use his prerogative to grant amnesty to more prisoners for petty offenders that, that they find themselves in these prisons. Again, the criteria for amnesty do not add non-violent drug users. We are not talk, talking about drug traffickers or traders. Somebody has been to prison because of a role of marijuana. Somebody two rows of marijuana. We are appealing to the president to reconsider the criteria for amnesty, to include non-violent drug users onto the amnesty criteria, particularly with the coming to force the Narcotics Commission Act at 1019 uh, 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 2020. May the president have mercy.
to ask these people or grant pardon to these people to decongest our overcrowded prison, which is a way to also help, should COVID get into our prison, the impact will be minimized. He called on stakeholders to pass the community service bill and activate the constitutional instrument for probation and payroll. If they had not sacrificed with the support from the general public and donation from government and their street protocols and COVID had entered in, officers would have also contracted COVID and would have taken it home to their people. That is why we are asking that more attention be given to uh, prison officers when we are considering security agencies for the work they are doing to enhance them to do more and sacrifice more for our country. Thank you. The foundation presented some assorted items and COVID-19 safety materials to the whole and Akuse prisons. Actually, during the time of the COVID-19, we suffered, but we went according to the rules and regulations offered from headquarters, prison headquarters. Hence, there has not been any record of any death in our prison, despite the congestions. But as they are here today, I know they are also hearing all the good work that we are doing. That is why they bring all these things to support us. So I would like to thank you so much for all that we are doing today. And we pray that the Almighty God will protect all of us. Thank you very much. Fred Kwame Asai, Joy News. Oh. The government has secured funds for ongoing educational infrastructure projects, uh, particularly the 21st century model junior high schools around the country. At least 10 model junior high schools have been awarded on contracts with completion expected in 10 months. Deputy Education Minister Reverend uh, Dr. John Intimfojo is optimistic that the model school project will not be delayed due to budgetary difficulties. Ohim Interior has more in the following report. The 21st Model Junior High Schools project was introduced as part of the government's educational reforms. The reforms include the provision of modern educational infrastructure. Each model school has a 1,200 student capacity and will include four laboratories, library and a sick bay with emphasis on science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Fix Ade is an assistant architecture at the Funds and Procurement Unit at the Education Ministry. Because it's a STEM school, we are going to have labs like the engineering, uh, uh, genetic engineering, uh, Internet of Things, and then we also have artificial intelligence to help the technology and then engineering uh, uh, aspects in our schools. Speaking at two separate salt cutting ceremonies at Abenasi in the Ajusu Municipality and Jabin respectively, Deputy Education Minister Reverend Dr. Intim Fojo said it is time to improve education infrastructure. A time has come for us to review this. A time has come for us to improve upon this narrative. One of the sure and effective strategies that we are employing to ensure that we cure that weakness of the secondary education quality is to build infrastructure and equip it with all the facilities required to give true secondary education to junior high school peoples. According to the Deputy Minister, the government has made budgetary allocations to ensure the project does not suffer any setback like previous government of Ghana. Funding projects. is already available for every project that we're casting sort for. If one is probably compared with the narrative of time past, now things have changed. For this government since 2017, when we took power, Every education infrastructure that will be commenced will only be commenced when funding has been earmarked and budget approved for it. So that is sorted. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament for Ejuso and Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma is optimistic the project, when completed, will improve education in the Ejuso area. We thank His Excellency the President for remembering Abnasi in the Jusu constituency to be one of the community beneficiaries of the 21st century uh, junior high schools. Uh, it means a lot to us and we believe that the president's commitment to universal education for every Ghanaian child will be strengthened and deepened in our constituency with this STEM facility that we have here. I also want to take advantage to thank Nananum for giving us the lands 
so that we can also lobby for more development projects into this constituency. From Kumasi, Ohimi Interia reporting. Chief Justice Enini Abo is urging the youth to use legitimate means to demand solutions to their challenges confronting them. There have been concerns in recent times about students' resorts to uh, rioting on some campuses when they are displeased with university policy. Speaking at the installation of the new Hallmaster for Commonwealth Hall Thursday, the Chief Justice recounted his own experiences of demanding solutions during this, uh, his years as a student. There's more in the following report. <laughs> Current and all students grace the colorful occasion. I always have a deep sense of nostalgia when I step in Common Hall. And yet my memories of the first year when I stepped in this hall are as vivid as just yesterday. I landed in Common Hall by mistake. At the point I was lead candidate for Chief Vandal for this great hall of Commonwealth. But when they took me to Father Bakus and the shrine, I was torn between being announced the first Muslim chief vandal. New hall master, Dr. Francis Ajay, pledged to deal with the challenges facing the hall. A few months ago, I shared my vision for Commonwealth Hall with the fellows as lifting the image of the hall to levels beyond where our forebears have left it for us. Through transparent administration and sound governance practices that will make all its stakeholders feel valued and respected, this vision is anchored on three levers. One, consolidating our gains by maintaining our identity as Commonwealth Hall, learning lessons from our history to improve our successes. And third one is to improve students' experiences on campus. For our staff, Creating avenues to motivate you, enhancing professional work attitude and performance for growth and development are integral to our medium term outlook. We will hopefully attain this by ensuring greater discipline and professionalism among you. Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Naba Amfo, assured management is poised to address the accommodation challenges confronting the school. Undeniably, student accommodation is one of the major challenges that we are facing as a university. On the particular matter of the Commonwealth Hall Annex, Council has taken up that matter and is in communication with the Old Vandal Association. My role as Vice Chancellor would be to liaise between all the interested parties and to ensure that all concerns are legitimately addressed. Chief Justice Kwesi Ninibwa took the opportunity to advise students on how to press home demand for solutions. So my personal plea to you, especially the young ones, there are so many ways of redressing obvious wrongs which may happen on the university campus. Please, as a community, we are bound by laws and regulations. My appeal to you is to try as much as possible to have means of redressing these wrongs. When we were here, and uh, uh, Dr. Banfo happened to be our hall master. B B Sir, uh, Professor Akusa is here. He can bear with me. We complain bitterly. Uh, Doc, our food, food is not good. Please, can you spare us some time and come and take it so that you... He said, oh, you are eating the, be the best of uh, uh, food on the campus. So he was not prepared to come. So what did we do? One day we packed every food that they had prepared. We seized every food from the, from, the, uh, from the kitchen, put them on trials, three barrels, straight to the university hospital where he was working. I said, Prof, if you claim the food is good, you eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> he left every, everything there and came back. Then the next day, improvement. The next day, improvement. The installation ceremony kickstarts a series of activities marking the hall's annual week celebration. A four Aprequas report read to you. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. We return with some business stories. Now, 
local market leader, Goyle, has joined other big firms uh, like Shell and Total to increase fuel prices at the pumps. It is now selling petrol uh, and diesel at uh, 7 cities 88 pesos from the previous 7 cities 30 pesos. The increase has been influenced by rising crude prices on the international market and the pressure on the local currency. Other oil marketing firms are expected to adjust their prices. Fast-growing bank, Calbank, says it is poised to deepen its uh, retail presence and support for women entrepreneurs across the country. Uh, according to its uh, group head, customer and retail, Peter Fojo, the move is to ensure superior banking services to all Ghanaians and ensure a good customer relations. There's more in the following report. Calbank's new branch at Medina is expected to cater to the needs of surrounding communities where traders for majority of the bank's clientele, the group head of consumer and retail banking, Peter Foggio, said Cowbank would deepen its Obapa loan, which is targeted at female clients, as well as nature micro, small and medium-sized enterprises run by female entrepreneurs. What makes Cowbank unique? Sorry. Because in Medina, we have many other bank branches here. And I mentioned that as a bank, we've set ourselves apart to look at women entrepreneurs. And the reason I mentioned that is because in Ghana, we have about 40% of businesses owned by women. But women struggle to access financing. So Carbank, we have set up a women's banking unit whose duty is to help women entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses build their capacity to access financing. So it's a unique feature we have as a bank, which I think in this environment, where it's a business-prone environment, will play to our strength as a, as a bank. So the unit does a lot of reaching out because their work is out there, not in the offices. So they meet the market women on the one-on-one. -on -one. We, we do seminars, we do webinars, we do programs, we do outreaches where the main aim is to help them understand how to better manage their finances and build their capacity so they can also access financing from the bank. Medina branch manager of the bank, Lavia Wesley Otu, said the bank will continue to provide quality customer services for clients in Medina and the surrounding areas. For, for these sales teams that will go out there to, I mean, in terms of monitoring, these are well-trained staff well-trained staff and with, 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 with banking one of the things is trust and honesty and so apart from the fact that they are well-trained we believe that these are people who are trustworthy they have the know-how the technical know-how they have the skills they have the knowledge to make sure that these women that would want financial solutions or um, products and services are well catered for. Cal Bank is hoping to, by the end of the year, add to its physical growth agenda by opening additional branches subject to regulatory approval. Stambik Bank Ghana and Tata Africa Holdings Limited have entered into a partnership to create value for its customers. According to its Chief Executive Officer, Kamina Esuman, the partnership is in line with the bank's uh, promise of helping find ways to, of making dreams possible to ensure the acquisition of vehicles uh, are easily done and convenient for potential car owners and businesses. The following report has more. The partnership targets individuals, small and medium scale enterprises and large commercial businesses and enables them easily secure a loan of up to 90% of the asset cost. Under the agreement, customers will be able to acquire Tata, Daewoo, Jaguar, and Land Rover vehicles through Stambik Bank. The repayment period is five years with a flexibility of paying for insurance in installments for a period of one year. Here is Chief Executive Officer of Stambik Bank, Kwamna Ismini. Our bank's purpose is that Africa is our home. We drive a growth. And so we're always looking for opportunities that will help drive the continent's growth and the country's growth. Uh, transportation is an area where, and logistics are areas where we feel that uh, a need exists for many of our customers. And so this partnership is focused on addressing that critical need uh, that exists for, for, for companies and individuals. Country head of Tata Africa Holdings, Karun Sabawal, explained the need to have the partnership with the bank. This uh, partnership was basically... Uh, we are uh, we were in a need of a good financial solution for our customers wherein uh, our customers pay a part uh, of money as down payment and drive the truck they earn and they pay the balance from the truck itself so that necessitated the partnership with the uh, uh, stanbic bank clients will pay the loan on installment basis
Now Ghana's top uh, computer training provider, NIIT, says it is ready to support young women and youth in acquiring skills in information technology. According to the head of business and director uh, for the Open Labs, uh, information technology courses are designed by uh, their outfits to equip students with IT skills to become developers in the field. There's more in the following report. Following the launch of the Youth Employment Initiative, Open Labs Ghana will train selected students in IT development. These students will be aided in getting jobs after their study, according to the head of business and director for Open Labs, Sujit Jaya Prakash. There is the need to equip young people with information technology skills to make them more employable to support the economy. Uh, the objective of this program is to address two things. One is addressing the increasing unemployability in Ghana, and uh, the second one is to address the gender gap which is happening in the technology in the field of technology um, although government and other private organizations have been putting a lot of measures in addressing these challenges and so stu the selected students will be going through a particular program without paying fees so it's a six months program so they will be taking this particular program after completing that we will assist them to get jobs and once they get into the jobs they will start paying back the fees in installments. Mr. Jaya Prakash also said the students will be monitored in their daily activities to avoid cyber security issues that will mar their development in the field. And uh, how are these ethics of using technology as is inbuilt in these programs? So we always make sure that any graduates who come out of open labs has these ethics in their mind uh, not to not to um, what you call exploit the uh, technology they are using. The program will last for six months and students are to only pay their fees after school. The price of Gary has seen a 100% increase since the outbreak of COVID-19. Now this was revealed after an interaction with some serial traders at the Osu market. Joy, News, uh, Joy Business uh, Beverly Broom has more in today's edition of the shopping list. Hello and welcome to another edition of the shopping list. Today we are at the Yosu market to take a look at the prices of cereals. On my list I have garnet, I have gari, I have beans, I have wheat and then I have millet. Come along with me. We say one cup we have four CDs. Four CDs for one cup. Which one is say? Say. We say one cup. So we shall need for now. Yeah, the G22 cities. First, no, yeah. Now you're talking about say 18 cities for bigger cup. Now we say no. Yeah, you're three cities. It's a big bigger cup for you. 18 cities. For now, no, you have to tune your every Brazil day. I will be come market you. You have to tune your memo. It's your corner. Someone they can cry to swear. Yes, we are back. I was saying the equipment be the two so. It's for now. We need a bigger cup, no. I have 22 CDs. Now, beans, no, me, so many types of beans. Cheche, me, no. Eh, there were different types mm. of beans. Mm. Eh, we say in Nigeria, and in Ososo. We say in Wale Wale. Mm. We say in Wale Wale. We say honey beans. To say, we say, honey beans. And see, we say in one cup, no, I have seven CDs. Seven CDs. Yeah. How long can you say? 40 CDs for Lonka. And I went so, hey, Wale Wale. My dream, 5 CD. For Lonka, you did 30. For now. You want to get beans for her. And also, one cup, 4 CDs. For Lonka, you did 22 CDs. It is a mix. I say, I went to Wale Wale. Where are you, Wale Wale? Where are you, Nigeria? Nigeria. 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 Also, we no longer thirty-five. Thirty cities. For now. Uh huh. And we need twenty-two cities. Not that they figure on any more here. Price no. Eh, what say? Any more? Any penny? What you say? Obi wawa. I say Obi pay beans. Me pay the other beans. See ya. And I say me pay the next so. I didn't me any end the so need the so. Into be say we in Nigeria no any so. I seen Wale Wale no. In the Abasa na Nigeria no price no. I was stroke kakra. Wale Wale price no so. I say we form kakra. Being Sibia protein, I have ba by taste no. I ne kasa. Olonka say no. I have twelve CD. My dreamy ye two CD. 
we say no six a your loan car into say six ni your loan car next they say my dream year two cd into your loan car full no 12 cd until lizzy over in a gary a nye nye of you i look at 12 cd but that two cd Because <laughs> They broke you. A price be your money, can you? But uh, two city fifty pesos. A local fifteen. Ni ene three city, you look at eighteen city. If any broken. And then not be a broken, eh? Nothing is be a broken, but uh, three city. You look at eighteen. And then brought in uh still has to be a brown rice. Margin five city. Local 28 and then Nigeria be a man, but at three city, local 18. Oh man, you are going watch him, you can feel your love. She am a man, no, come in, who way? I'm a chum, okay, chum, a chum, one son, I'm a son. I was like, my lamb, make a new work, okay, well, if you come here, come here, I should go, you know, I'm a pretty old lady, I can't feel me, you know, you are my name, you know, and then. So it's a wrap for us here at the Osu market. But note that all of these prices can vary within the space of 24 hours. So anytime you're stepping out of your home to visit the Osu market, make sure you have a miscellaneous to cater for all your unplanned expenses. For Joy Business, I am Beverly Broom. And that's it for business. We'll leave you with a summary of uh, some other stories making well, the headlines around the world in, uh, in business.
Hello, good evening and welcome to the second part of the sports segment. Now, right when I was wrapping up in the first part, I did mention that all 10,000 tickets for the Super Clash had been sold out. Uh, now, the National Sports Authority have made a U10 on the 25% declaration for the capacity on Sunday and have just released a statement stating that on Sunday, the, the, the full capacity of the Accra Sports Stadium can be used uh, for the super clash uh, between Hart of Folk and Asante Kotoko. And then this is a letter signed by the board chairman of the National Sports Authority, or the director general, that's Professor Peter Chumesi. And it's titled The League Match Between Accra Hart of Folk and Kumasi Asante Kotoko. It says the National Sports Authority ex extends its warmest compliment. Now, per consultation of the governing board of authority with the government health service and that's the COVID-19 tax force. I have been directly uh, I have been directed to officially inform you that as the clubs receive clearance uh, to play full capacity at the Accra Sports Stadium uh, during the match between Accra Hatofolk and Kumasi Asante Kotoko on Sunday 20th February 2022 all attendees must strictly wear face masks and observe social distancing. Now it goes on to say that you are therefore advised to work closely with the authorities management, COVID-19 task force and other stakeholders to enforce this directive. Our Ghana Health Service will also mount vaccination centers to offer free COVID-19 vaccinations to spectators and the general public, counting on your usual cooperation. So that's the big story coming in. So between now and Sunday, uh, there will be at least 20,000 more tickets available for the Super Clash. And so I do advise that you stay home first, but now you can go out there and get tickets and witness uh, the biggest fixture in Ghana football. But to some more stories, the government is set to inject over $200 million to ensure successful hosting of the 2023 African Games. Sports Minister Mustafa Yusuf made this pronouncement at the meeting with representatives of African Union who were happy with ongoing works so far at the venues earmarked for the Games. Haruna Mubarak was at the event and put together this report. It all began at Alisa Hotel. The program was graced by several dignitaries, including Sports Minister Mustafa Yusuf, Mrs. Maria Masisi Mohammed, who is the Director of Social Development, Culture and Sports, plus heads of federations and members of the African Union. The Continental Body sent representatives to Ghana to inspect ongoing works at the various venues. Sports Minister gave them an amiable welcome and reassured them of government's commitment in ensuring a successful gains. Ghana has met its obligation of paying the initial 900,000 US dollars to the African Union as a commitment fee to host the 13th African Games. The government of Ghana is committing over 200 million US dollars to provide the international standard sports infrastructure for the games and several millions of the U.S. dollars in activities before, during, and after the Games. Boteman was the first venue inspected by the reps of the AU. The multi-purpose complex, when completed, will have a thousand-seater swimming pool arena, a thousand-seater sports hall for indoor events, five tennis courts, six-lane warm-up athletics track, among others. The works ongoing are at the foundation stage and the workers have a deadline to meet. I'm currently work, working on the foundations and uh, clearing of the site basically and uh, we're waiting because of the rains which will be coming in very soon all our energies are focused on the earthworks and that is what we are currently focusing on. So we'll meet a deadline three months early before the game so we can test all the equipment and all the facilities that we provided for the games. Nine months ago, this land was empty. There was no sign of any construction work. But today, the workers around me, the caterpillar behind me, the danger signs clearly suggest one thing. The workers are working around the clock to ensure they complete the project in 15 months' time. At Legon, a site for the games village, athletics and rugby fields, no facility has been completed there. Contractors have been given a deadline of December this year. This is how it will look like when completed. 
The cricket venue at Achimota needs to be upgraded to meet the international standard. The scoreboard and floodlights at the hockey site are the two facilities that have to be changed. Tennis courts at the Accra Sports Stadium plus the football turf were examined as well with no major issues which has impressed the inspectors. This one behind you already, <laughs> they just need a bit of refurbishing. So for me it's not that there is no facility available. Uh, Ghana will be hosting Africa, uh, Ghana will be hosting athletes of Africa and I can ensure you from what you have seen from the tour today that all that is, has to be done technically is being planned so that the games can be delivered in due time. Despite not completing any new facility, the local organizing committee is optimistic of getting the job done. Being our first time, we are all committed to getting this project done. And we, we hope that by the deadline, it's not just, it's not one year, we have a bit more than one year. So it's, 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 it's going to, yes, so roughly 18 or 17 months. So we're hoping that we'll be able to, uh, the contractors have been told to try as much as possible to meet the deadlines. And we are hoping and, and, and praying that all will be well. The sand in the hourglass continues to fall with just 18 months remaining for Ghana to perform an infrastructural miracle for the 2023 Africa Games. Haruna Mubarak for Joy Sports. Well, that's how we wrap up the sport here. My name is Ori Kwampo. For an up next is a joint news editorial by Araba Kumsin. This week has been eventful. We've seen fuel prices shoot up. NAPCO beneficiaries have been busy protesting and calling on government to pay up delayed allowances. The city has broken jail and it is depreciating against the dollar. But today, we choose to address an issue that has been simmering for a while. Three years ago, President Ekufuado announced the implementation of the new curriculum that would focus on making children confident, innovative, creative thinkers, digitally literate, well-rounded, and patriotic citizens. What a great idea. We all want Ghanaian children to be competitive globally, but after the introduction of the new curriculum for basic schools, government has not been able to supply textbooks. On December 9, 2021, this matter came up in Parliament and Minister for Education Yao Edutum explained that there's been a procurement holdup. He assured us that once relevant procurement processes are exhausted, Distribution of the textbooks will begin across all the regions and districts in the country. He was insistent the government is working around the clock to supply textbooks to our basic schools. Myself as a teacher-in-chief, we are going to classrooms to teach. And therefore, we are going to do everything possible to make sure the textbooks are there. That is why this time I was careful not to give you a date, because I know my colleague will come and quote me. But all that I can assure you of is that we are at a critical stage where the quality assurance is being done so that I don't have a situation where some um, T's are not crossed and I's are not dotted to get into trouble with my ordinary colleague. So Mr. Speaker, all that I can say is that the final stage is what we have done now, quality assurance. That was the minister in 2019. We're in February 2022 and still basic schools have no textbooks. Teachers have been creative and are still managing and trying to manage the situation for three years. The teachers they've been complaining, both Nat and Nagrat have consistently complained about this matter, but to no avail. So now teachers are using training manuals given to them to impart knowledge to the pupils. But should it get to this level? I mean, is the situation so dire that government cannot provide basic learning materials such as textbooks to pupils? Now, this government introduced free SHS to ensure access. Thankfully, many who hitherto would have been left out are now included. But if by so doing, we are unable to supply textbooks to the basic schools for them to study and qualify to SHS, then we're doing something very, very wrong. I mean, for crying out loud, other countries are sending satellites to space and we cannot send textbooks to schools. Mr. Education Minister, our humble plea 
is that you send these textbooks to the basic schools. The sooner the better. Delay and we will all be worse for it. Because really, if the government can afford to fly luxury aircrafts to transact business, then surely we should be able to print simple textbooks for our basic schools. And that's all we have for you on Joy News Prime. My name is Blessed Sugan. Don't forget to log on to myjoyonline.com. That's where we have all the updates on our running stories for you.